Geezers, what's going on? Spacey here. We are doing a tier list of the latest expansion cards. In my opinion, it is a contender for the best expansion ever, particularly the best expansion ever considering the amount of cards that we have. I think it's like 24 cards, 22 cards, something like that. Um, I think it's been absolutely brilliant. There's still so many things to try out that I haven't got to, but we're going to do a tier list, which my moderator, Kedgling, shout out to Kedge, um, put together. So thank you for that. We've got Broken Mate. The Travelling Priestess is probably going to be in here. <laughs> uh, we've got the Popping Off tier. We've got the Decent, Not the One, and the Dead tier. So, yeah, let's crack on without any further ado. Also, if you guys don't follow me on Twitch, I'm doing this live. So, Twitch chat's here. Twitch.tv forward slash specimen. Make sure you come hang out there. All right. We're going to do the neutrals first. Uh, we've got Erendite. Now, this card is controversial because I don't think it's as good as people expected at times because the problem with this card is it's incredibly high variance, particularly... Uh, from whether you're on blue coin or red coin. So blue coin is when you go first. And when you go first, Erendite is just going to be getting much more value. However, then that means if you're on red coin, it's often difficult to catch up to your opponent. Let's say they open with um, a magic lamp and emistry. You're already, you know, like 11 points down or whatever. Like you're going to need to make an 11 point play for your Erendite to tick. Whereas if you're going first, all you need to do is flip your lamp and literally discard a card and your Erendite's ticking. So the variance of this card is really, really high. I think... Personally, this card is going to be a problem when it comes to tournaments because if you've got a deck which is really good on blue coin, this can really, really um, give you an advantage in those kinds of decks. Like a vampire deck, maybe, for example. Maybe not the best example because vampires aren't maybe that good in tournaments usually. But I think this card's really good. Um, I think it's going to be significantly better in a tournament setting than it is on ladder. As I say, because you're just going to have a deck you play on blue coin, you can play the Aaron Diet. A deck you are going to play on red coin, it's not going to go in your deck, right? And of course, on ladder, it's just flipping uh, in between. Um, next, we've got Mysterious Puzzle Box. Um, my least favorite card of the expansion simply because of the fact that it's got this graphical glitch a lot of the time where all your cards turn um, into like potato looking cards. Uh, obviously, it is seeing quite a lot of play, particularly because of Golden Necker. It's an artifact which there aren't a whole bunch of um, Golden Necker artifact options. It's a neutral. Um, it's definitely not popping off in my opinion, but I definitely think it's decent. I think it's, it's a very decent card. I don't think we can really put it in popping off. It's a very good card though, I think. Arcane Tome. I'm putting it in popping off. I absolutely love this card. I think it's fantastic. Uh, really, really cool card design. It kind of reminds me of old Summoning Circle. The fact that you can play it on your side of the board and then put it, give it to your opponent. Now in Mill, this card is up here, right? But let's be honest, it, it, it's, it's more here. Um, one of my favorite cards from the set. Honestly... Contender for my favorite. I think this card's fantastic. Great in mill decks. Really nice in combo decks like Triple Gurney. Um, very, very fun card. Even like it with Fran, there's some cool synergy. With anything with spells, like whether it's like um, Congregate, a Lime Pocket. Very cool card. Big fan. Obviously as well, it helps you do some very nice combos with Golden Necker. Where you can go Golden Necker into a unit. And you could go Tome into like Roll the Green. You can play like three units in turn. There's just all sorts of stuff you can do with this, right? Like helps your consistency of pulling off those wacky Golden Echo combos with stuff like Decoy and, and, and Salamander and stuff. So yeah, big, big fan. I know we've got Ring. I mean, this card is not quite as good as Priestess, but it's definitely one of the best cards um, from the set. I think this card needs to get enough pretty significantly. Uh, I would make it more provisions and I would also start its boost lower. Like rather than, I think it starts off as four boost, right? I would maybe just turn it to like zero, honestly. Like the card is just very, 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 very good. I also got Rune Mage. Hmm. I haven't actually used Rune Mage much. I still haven't played Assimilate Nilfgaard. It's not really a deck I'm a big fan of. I think it's incredibly good in that deck. Um, I've also really enjoyed using it with Uma, with Francesca. Uh, also, we've done Elf and Onion Soup in Alchemy. I honestly think this card might be pretty good as just a card in alchemy decks generally anyway, like a Gettyneth deck, because it is actually playing an alchemy card off the runestone, and then you can go for the Skelliger runestone to try and find another one. Now, the question is, is it in decent or is it in popping off? I think it's I think it's in between. I think we're going to put it in popping off because of how good it is in assimilate decks, right? Um, it's not as universal as these two other cards, have proven to be, but I still think it's a really, really great card. I love the design of it. I think it's really fairly priced. In fact, I think all these cards are really fairly priced except these two. So yeah. Troll Porter. Probably the card I've... Uh, the, looking at this set that we've got is the card I want to experiment with most still. I really haven't experimented much with it. I think this card is probably really underrated. Um, it is really good in decks like Lippy, where you like recycle your deck and you could just banish a whole bunch of cards. It's got some cool Snowdrop synergy. 
I'm not going to put it in popping off, though. I'm going to put it in decent. I'm going to put it in, like, lower decent. Like, lower than this, anyway. Because this is, like, seeing more play. But I think this card is very, very underrated. I, I need to experiment more with this one, myself. You could do some hyper thin stuff with it, mainly, maybe. Um, yeah, but... Also, like, maybe if you're doing, like, a 35-card Colgrim deck, this could be an interesting inclusion. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not, because you play Calvate, right? But, anyway. Cool card. Uh, up next, oh, we've got the puzzle box. We've just got two copies of it. I mean, you could say that kind of vibe, right? But we'll just put these next to each other. Cool. Uh, Golden Ecker. Now, I don't think Golden Ecker's broken. However, this is the best card of the expansion. This is what's made the expansion so good. This almost, like, deserves its own tier, right? Um... This card is incredible because the amount of hype the Golden Necker has had, right? It's been like this figure that we've just been looking at and now it's actually in the game. How on earth have CDPR managed to develop a card which lives up to the hype of such a thing in the Gwent community, right? And they've done it. I think it's amazing. It's opened up so many interesting decks. Um, as old lady mentions in the chat there, like the RNG element of it is very interesting. Like you can use it in mill, for example, to like mill early. You can use it in other decks to like play Salamander twice. It's just such a flipping cool card. I don't think it can go anywhere but popping off. It's not broken, but it's just the top of popping off. I, I just absolutely love this card. Up next, we've got Vile of whatever it's called, Forbidden something or other. Magic? I don't know. Um, this card is really bloody interesting. Fantastic in mill decks. In mill decks, it's up here. It's actually just like unbelievable. It's ridiculous how good it is in mill decks. Um, open deck list on ladder is just such a brand new concept. Again, the design of this card is just absolutely out of this world. So bloody interesting. Um, I think we've just got to put it in popping off as well. I don't think we can put it in broken. I think it's really fairly balanced. Honestly, when this card was first printed, when I saw uh, the cards before the release... The two cards I thought would be the most broken were Ring and um, this. I actually thought this card would be better though, to be honest. But this is just proven to be so bloody interesting. Uh, Ornate Sensor. I flipping love this card, dude. You might, you're might you seeing a common theme, man. I just love these cards, man. This card is so damn cool. Um, I've really enjoyed it in Lippy in particular. It's actually the deck I found it to be most successful in. Definitely going to be successful in Arrakis Swarm decks as well. I just don't think Arrakis Swarm decks are particularly good. Um, Lippy also not so much. But you can do some cool things with Alyssa where you get to play it a couple of times. Lippy does the same thing. I just love the card. It's great. Uh, we've got the Giant Toad next. This card is flipping brilliant. <laughs> it just is. Uh, we're, get, we're, we're getting to some bad cards, guys. There's quite a lot of bad cards. We kind of uh, seem to have accidentally organized the good factions at the top and the, the worst factions later on. Um, I really love this card. We still need to try this in Vi. I wouldn't be surprised if Vi is really, really strong. Um... This card is great. I just think the rest of the Death Wish archetype is still lacking a little bit of something. But uh, the card itself is just fantastic. It really, really is great. Um, it's not great in Vi. How come, you reckon, that is, Mr. Paul? Vi never needed consume. It does sometimes, right? Sometimes it does need consumes. If you're up against, like, um, Stockpile, for example, they're going to kill all your consumes. It's a bit slow. Yeah... I mean, the actual consume itself, like, the, the turn you play it, it's not going to be very good in Vi, that's for sure, right? But the carryover part of it, jeez. I wonder if you even play Megascopes for more of these, right? Yeah, that's the question. What would you consume of it first? Not much, right? You maybe start playing, like, Foglets, Double Foglet. You could also play Megascopes for carryover on, on this. Three-point Megascope for a consume carryover. Because you just don't have to, like, wait. Like, the, it's slow the turn you play it, but the tempo you get the following turn, the following round, right? By just being able to play Vi without having a consume on the board. So good. Usually do not play Deathwish units in Vi. Yeah, but you just start playing them with this now, right? We'll play Vi, actually. Maybe we could even do that now. Probably tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, this card, like, maybe it proves not to be that great in Vi, but the card is great anyway, right? It really is a great card. It's also got Beast Tag, which is kind of cool for Morvid, which is a card I really like. We've got Necromancer's Tome. This card is popping off. Um, probably going to put it, like, here. Uh, lots of people playing this in Vampires with Golden Echo. I wouldn't be surprised if Regis Tome is, is pretty good as well. Um, I think Regis is too good to cut. It's, like, the best card in Vampires. It's even better than Fledders. So I don't really like the Golden Echo version so much. 
They're, I mean, they're cool. But yeah, this card's really interesting. You can do some cool stuff with relics with it. Uh, it can completely whiff. Obviously, it makes sense with Golden Necker being the fact that it's an artifact that you can pull with Necker. Uh, very, very cool card. We've got the Highland Warlord. I'm going to put this in not the one. I do think the card's actually pretty good, though. I do think the card's pretty good, but I don't think I can quite put it like... I think the, the, these cards are like actually very good. I think this... Oh, maybe, maybe this card's good. I just haven't played it that much. This card is really good. It's more like the deck that, it, that is, is supported by this card. It's not that good, right? We'll put it in decent. This card's definitely decent. I don't think we can put it in popping off. Because even though the card maybe itself is like very good, the deck which supports this is not great, in my opinion. I still haven't really played it much, though. Um, okay. I'm not going to put it in I'll put it in decent. I think you guys are right. I'm going to put it below these. I think these cards are great. Troll Porter and Puzzle Box are really, really great cards. So we'll put this in decent, too. All right. We've got Magic Compass. How's Troll decent? I think this card's really underrated, Habla. I haven't really fiddled with it too much yet. But, um... I think the card is really, really underrated. Like, it's just so much... You can get so much consistency through this. In, like, a Lippy deck, for example, you could use this, right? And, like, banish loads of your deck. Uh, like, if you're playing, like, Rodeo Shoop, Lippy, you could play Troll Porter. Like, banish all the bad cards. And then Lippy, and then you're just going to top deck all the all the juice, right? You could also, in theory, play Hyper Thin with this. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on this card. I've just got. I haven't. It's like probably the card I want to experiment with the most. Still, I think it's. I think it's going to prove to be a lot better. But you guys are probably right. We'll probably put it below this. Okay. This is like the main card I want to experiment with more. Um, but I think it's also like a very big brain. Like, there's like. It's, very, it's going to be really difficult to use. Also, like, it doesn't really lend itself to Hyperthin because you want to be thinning a consistent amount in Hyperthin, whereas you're not going to thin a consistent amount of this rope. Compass, guys. Is Compass broken or is it popping off? We've got to put it in broken, mate. It's, uh, it's, it's broken. It's the worst of these cards because it's so difficult to use, right? And actually get value from, whereas Ring is just every game and Priestess has got a whole deck built around it at the moment. Whereas Compass is... More fairly balanced, I would say. Eight provisions, and you can play flipping Fukusia. And you can even play two Fukusias with it if you built the deck properly. It's insane. It's utterly bonkers, but I think it's a really, again, fantastically designed card. We have Muta Generator next. Now, there's two categories which have not been filled yet. Muta Generator, I think we've got to put it in dead, mate. Dead on arrival. Um... You can do some stuff with commandos of this, but I, the deck's going to be better without it. Uh, I would not be surprised if this card gets a rework or a very significant buff at some stage in the near future. Maybe you can make it a bronze card? I don't know. Maybe its ability is fine for bronze. Music is great. My commander's deck was so good with it. I still haven't properly played it. I still haven't properly played the card. Um, but my gut feeling is... It's shit. Now, this is a good time to just, like, rearrange... Gresh's impact on the tier list is popping off. Yeah, he does. The guy does know what he's talking about a bit, and he does speak some sense, to be fair. All right, I feel this, this is more reasonable. All right, up next, we've got the Conjurer's Candle. I think this card's fantastic. I wouldn't say it's broken, but it's kind of close to being broken. I'm going to put it here. Um, it's carryover, it's profit. It gives you some spenders um, without having jackpot passive. Um, it's Golden Necapool. You can buff stuff up like a Czar. Uh, this card's great. We still need to play more Salamander. Um, I'm just going to use old school Salamander of King of Beggars. And this card is just unbelievably good in that deck as a way of buffing up your defender and stuff. I think it's absolutely insane how good this card is. All right, this this other card, this card's popping off, right? Would we ever say this card is broken? Would we ever put this in broken? I don't know if I'd, put, I don't know if I'd describe it as broken, but I do think it's amazing. Off the book synergy. Line pocket synergy, probably the two best leaders at the minute. Honestly, I think it I think it deserves to be there. I think it deserves to be there. It's got King of Beggars synergy. You can search for a poison. You can just do anything you want, right? I love the card too. It's really, really cool. Actually, interestingly, in PTR, this card like was designed slightly differently and it was really, really janky and awkward. So they did a great job to actually make it competitive. I think it just needs like a slight nerf, probably. Probably maybe just like a point of it yeah i think vendor's gotta be there it's obviously not on the same level as these two right but yeah next up we have uh the giant slayer now interestingly uh 
Scoia'tael, Mac and Forge decks are, even if you don't go all in dwarfs, like, there's some really flipping good bronzes there now. Like the four provision ones. And this is another one that's like really good, but it's a six provision one. Um, I think due to the amount of competition in the bronzes, we're going to put it in decent. I don't think the card's really good though. It's better than the Warlord. Better than this. Probably better than Sensor. Right here. Um, I think if you're playing this card, I actually wouldn't. I would actually argue if you're playing this card, you should play both of them. And you should also be playing like Zoltan and Gabor, right? Because you're just, or, or like Defender maybe. Just trying to overload the Purify, basically. Yeah, the card's really, really good actually. But I'm not going to put it in popping off just because of how much competition there are for um, cards in Dwarfs. Like Dwarfs have so many flipping good go uh, cards. But you actually, yeah, a lot of the time you might not even play the card. But it's still really good. It's just the Dwarfs have so many cards which are just insanely good. Prism is better than Muta Generator. But it's not. It's dead. We've played Prism in Dwarf Deck. It's going to be up on the YouTube. If it's not already, it's going to be up soon. It performed okay. It did. But it, it, the deck would have been better without it. So... Um, I know Crozier's played like over 100 games with this card trying to get it to work and hasn't really had much joy. Something Crozier's mentioned he'd like to see is like it's spawning maybe a couple of like wandering treants when you play it or something. Just because a lot of the time with the if you try and buff a lot of your own cards up you have like too much vitality. That's just kind of scuffed. Uh, I'm next we've got Profit. Uh, yeah. It's probably the worst card of the set, right? We've done all in Profit. It was garbage. We did beat Mill though. That was cool. <laughs> we did manage to beat Mill. Uh, we tried Profit with Golden Necker, where you go Golden Necker into Profit into Ethereal to transform the Profit to then hope that your opponent's hand stays locked after they play something. It doesn't work. This is the worst card of the drop. Finally, last but not least, we have Obsidian Mirror. This is a four provision tactic that is probably not going to see any play ever. However... However, there is a Shining Light, which is 35 card Colgrim decks and like Enslave 9 or 10 or whatever you can do. I'm appearing not the one, because at least it has some use. I don't think that it's ever correct to put any of these cards in your deck, apart from maybe Commandos. Yeah, maybe maybe we do it like that then. Nah, but then Trollport has got to go up, man. I think let's do it like this. I think... Like, you could make a case to say this card could... I, I don't know on this. It could end up down here once I've tested the deck more. But this has some cool uses with commandos. Where, like, if you've got, let's say, nine commandos in deck and you play a five... And then you play the commando, right, from hand, then those all those nine... Those com those commandos all get boosted. So that's kind of cool. Whereas these two cards are, like, never, ever going to see play. Like, you could probably make a case for this. And you can make a case for this. I think this is my tier list. I think I'm quite happy with it. What do you guys think? Is there anything you would change... You could definitely make a case to like relegate these two. But I think they both deserve to be there. I, like these two cards like maybe deserve their own tier, right? But um Yeah. You reckon troll and generated down a tier. Maybe. I could also see that. I could see that. Honestly, this is probably more fair. I think this is probably more fair. I kind of agree with that, honestly. So that's my tier list. I hope you guys enjoy the tier list. If you want to see me do tier lists of other things, uh Go ahead and let me know. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like it. Check me out on Twitch, Twitch or TV. Who has that specimen? If you've watched this far, please leave a comment. The keyword is eyes.